Hi, Steve Harrison here, and you know, I love bringing you interviews from authors that can really make a huge difference in your life. And if you're on my list for any length of time, you know that I'm all about helping you get your message out there so that you can have the impact that you want and the income that you want. And one of the things we don't really talk much about is things like investing. What do you do with the money once you have it? Uh, you know, whether it's your the, the money you're making from your work, whether it's the money you're making as an author, as a speaker. And here's a great interview for somebody who's personally helped me a lot. Uh, also been one of my favorite clients because every time I talk to him, I learn so much. John Jameson. John, welcome. I'm glad to be here, Steve. Thanks for having me. Really excited to be on your on your call today. Well, you know, it's great, John. I know you have spoken in almost every major city in North America about financial strategies, how people can accelerate uh, their their investment strategy to uh, avoid losing money and also to just uh, build their wealth. You've got a, a great new book uh, that I've, it's been fun to play a part in for you called Wealth Without Stocks or Mutual Funds. Let's, in fact, let's let people take a look at the book cover here, Wealth Without Stocks or Mutual Funds. And, you know, John, I think right off the bat, that's a great hook. You know, I teach about hooks and getting publicity and 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 yet for you, it's even more than a hook. This is something that you passionately, I know, believe in. A lot of times people, they, they figure, how, how do I build wealth without stocks or mutual funds? Is that really possible? Uh, open our eyes. Yeah, it really is. Um, you know, we've all been taught one way to think about money and finances and getting ahead and that way is put money in 401ks and IRAs put that money into mutual funds and that money goes into the stock market and then we get to ride that average rate of return up and down up and down and often wondering are we really getting anywhere meanwhile in other parts of our life we're bleeding money out to banks to uh, all kinds of different I call it the four wealth drains to depreciation to uh, market losses, we're bleeding all that money out, not even thinking twice about it. So we show people, um, you know, a couple different things. But one of the main things we show them is, hey, you don't need the stock market, mutual funds, or even a 401k to create wealth. And of course, that goes against traditional norms. But we prove it without a doubt with pretty much fifth grade math uh, inside of that book by showing people how to really have a truly diversified wealth portfolio. And that doesn't mean different classes of stocks or mutual funds as you're taught through the traditional financial world. Mm. Well, I think the, probably the natural question as people hear this, right, is they say, well, if you're not investing in stocks and mutual funds, I mean, what are you doing with the money? Well, there's several different things you can do. One of the things we show people how to do is to keep more of what they make. So I'm sure you've heard before, in fact, you're, you're from Philadelphia, right? Yeah. Benjamin Franklin. And he's famous for saying a penny saved is a penny earned. But when Benjamin Franklin said that, Steve, there was no income tax. So truly, uh, if we want to say a dollar saved is a dollar earned, today's, in the, today, uh, day and age, you have to make a dollar forty to keep that, keep that dollar. Hmm. So what if we could show you ways to stop bleeding money out of your life, ways to make money on an automobile? Did you know, Steve, that the average American will spend more money on automobiles than they're ever able to put away for retirement? So we could show them how to just make money on every automobile instead of lose their shirts. They automatically are going to have, now depending on their age, they're automatically going to have several hundred thousand dollars more put away for retirement by simply plugging up that one wealth drain. And we show people multiple wealth drains. So yes, we show you places where to put money to make it grow. But we also show you how to make sure that you're not losing money every month needlessly transferring your wealth to other people without even knowing it. Hmm. Yeah, and you've got some, you know, it's, you've just got some great chapters here. And I know you've been getting great reviews, you know, on the, on the book. Um, but, you know, one of the things you talk about is uh, beat the bank by becoming the bank. Tell me more. Well, here's an exercise I get everybody to do when I'm speaking live. Is I want you to add up um, all the payments you've paid to lending institutions over your lifetime. And that's going to be on real estate, cars, boats, you name it, anything. Um, and then whatever that figure is, I want you to double it because by giving up all that money to lending institutions, you gave up any growth of that money and you gave it away to the banks. Mm -hmm. If you could have maintained that money and just grew it at even an, a decent rate of return, but a compound tax free rate of return, which you can do, let's just say you've spent a million dollars on payments over your lifetime, double that to two million and then compare that figure to the amount of money you have saved up in your 401ks and IRAs and tell me which figure is bigger. Right. Almost always it's banks this much, if you can right. see that. Right. And us this much. 
Yeah. So if we could just flip that around and start to recapture that cash flow that's leaving our life every month and every year, we're going to automatically have more money. So why not take a portion of your capital and treat it like a bank treats it and use what we call interest volume and velocity, which I won't bore you with here today, but it's in the book. And we show people how banks have been making money for centuries. And here's a tip. It's not so much just on interest rates. It's on interest volume and interest velocity of money. They understand that. And Steve, banking's been around for thousands of years in some form or fashion. You could take your ox into the temple, right? And they'd give you a loan on it. Well, any business model that's been around that long, I call it the second oldest profession. We know what the first one is. <laughs> Anyone, any business model that's been around that long, what does that tell you about the business model? Good it's point. a great business model. But the problem is we've only been taught that business model from the borrowing standpoint. We know about credit scoring and some of us know about ratios and all that stuff, but no one's ever really taught us how to be a bank. We'll teach you how to take your money, volumize and velocitize it first to yourself and then to other people and really make fantastic rates of return in a very safe environment, none of which is tied to the stock market. And I think what's also used a word a few minutes ago, automatically, you know, once you show people these strategies and they get set up, this is now automatic. This isn't something that they have to be just constantly disciplined and vigilant about. Once things are set up, then it's, it's, it's automatic. Yeah, that's true. Because as you know, the more complicated things are, the less likely people are to follow through with them. Yeah. So we make it extremely simple. I mean, is there anybody watching these videos that don't know how to make a payment? We all know how to make payments. We just don't know that we should be making those some of those payments to ourselves and eventually all of those payments to ourselves. Yeah. It's not difficult. Once it's set up, it happens automatically and systematically, really without hardly any involvement from you, which is a great thing, which means more people can follow through on these strategies. And they're, they become not just theory in a book, but real life strategies you can implement in your life and help you and your family for generations to come. And that's exciting for me to be a part of that. I think there's the other chapter I like in here is, you know, uh, reduce income taxes by 50 percent or more. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good yeah, that's a, that's an interest grabber. Yeah, it should, uh, because here's what people don't understand. The tax system is geared against employees and it's geared for business owners, even small business owners. The minute you're a business owner, you qualify for hundreds of tax deductions that you do not qualify for as an employee. Well, people don't understand that. Well, I, he's ten, I can't leave my job. I can't start it. I need my job. Well, that's okay. You can keep your job, but why not start a small business on the side? And Uncle Sam says you have to have the intent to make a profit and you have to work a reasonable amount of time. And he never defines reasonable, a reasonable amount of time in that business. And all of a sudden that business qualifies for all kinds of tax deductions that if done right and you work with a good CPA, some of those losses that you might experience in the early years of that startup business can be transferred over to your normal income from your job. And so if you could give yourself a pay raise starting next month and not have to get approval from your boss, how do you do that? You keep more of what you make. Hmm. So you do that with income tax deductions and the greatest amount of income tax deductions are available to small business owners, not employees. Good point. Good point. I think, you know, of course, a lot of people watching this are, are uh, in their own business or starting their own business, right? Because they're authors, speakers, coaches, consultants. Uh, anything that you'd make them aware of that you think would be, be helpful for them? Well, a couple things. There's all kinds of strategies in the book, but I will tell you this. I can tell you that I don't ever go on vacations. I only go either to corporate meetings of my own corporation or I go to business meetings. And if a vacation breaks out along the way, that's okay. But being it all depend it all depends on your intent. And if my intent is to go to a corporate meeting, um, much of my trip and much of my expenses become deductible. So you're going to find yourself going on no vacations, but going on plenty of business trips and corporate meetings. That one little tip could save you thousands of dollars a year in income taxes, depending on um, if you're able to write off quote unquote vacations. Yeah, it's it's totally true. And w now, what do you say to people that are struggling with debt, where maybe they've got just too much debt for whatever reason in their life? I know that you you talk about that in the book as well. Yeah, you know, debt's an interesting thing. You can use debt to create wealth if it's done strategically, but most of us don't look at debt strategic. We look at it as unfortunately we get ourselves in a hole. It could be from student loans, could be from just too big of a house, could be from a lot of things. And all of a sudden you wake up one day and you've almost become a slave to that debt. So if you're in that position, one of the first things you need to do is attack that debt. One of the best ways to do it is you need to understand really how interest works, and most of us don't. I tell people, Steve, that 5% is not 5% is not 5%. There's 5% simple interest, 
there's 5% amortized interest, there's 5% compounding interest, and there's also 5% average rate of return. Bottom line for this quick interview, anytime you can borrow money and borrow it on a simple interest basis, which are usually done through lines of credit or credit cards, that is the way you want to borrow money based on simple interest calculations. Well, anytime you buy a house, a car, boat, office equipment, those are almost always amortized loans. And we show you how to maximize the interest that you're paying and pay the right kind of interest. And on the back end, when you're receiving money and you're growing wealth, we want that to be compound interest and preferably tax-free anytime we can make it that way. And there's a lot of strategies available to the average person that they have no idea exist where you can pay simple interest, get paid compound interest, and you're going to be able to get out of debt much quicker knowing the distinction and using it to your advantage. So I think there's a theme here, right? Knowing what to do, getting the information, because a lot of times people just aren't educated about these possibilities. Yeah, it's true. Uh, if you're educated at all, you're educated from the traditional financial world. And if you think about it, Steve, who controls the traditional financial world? Pretty much banks and Wall Street. Yeah. So they're very happy to have you continue to borrow money, keep refinancing at lower rates. Did you ever ask yourself how come banks are so excited to refinance you when they're making lower interest rates? <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a worthwhile question, and the answer is because they make very little of their money. They're making their money on the spread. So whether or not they're paying you 3 or 4 or 8 or 10, the spread is still going to be the same. They make their money on interest volume and interest velocity. Hmm. And so that's something you always want to keep in mind when you're dealing with lending institutions and, and the stock market. They control it all. And anytime someone comes along that kind of ruins that system to say, hey, why don't you borrow money from yourself? What if you put resources not in the stock market? Now, Steve, I'm not anti-stock market. So sometimes you get stock market guys that want to jump down my throat about the average rate of return of the stock market over the last 100 years. Here's an interesting thing about average rates of return. You can pick that average anywhere that's going to suit you. So if the last three-year averages look pretty lousy, let's extend it out to six years. Eh, that's still not so great. Let's extend it out to 10 years. Well, that's still not great. Let's do a 20-year. Oh, yeah, that 20-year average, that's fantastic. Did you know for the last 20 years the market has averaged 12%? Okay, but it matters when that average is. And we've got a chart in the, in the book where I show people that we basically give them an, an example of having $500,000 put away for retirement, taking 5% of it out, 3% inflation rate, and over 20 years, averaging an 8.43 rate of, rate of return, on one column, you go from 500000 you pull a bunch of money out, and you still have a million five. And on the other column, you're broke by eight by uh, year 18. But you've averaged the same amount of money. But the mm -hmm. secret is, when did those averages occur? In the early years, if you got big returns, your pile of money is much higher. So now when you suffer losses, it doesn't really affect you that badly. But if you happen to time the market wrong and you get in and start heavy losses right from the beginning, you can't recover. Mm -hmm. So av be very careful about average rate of return. It's used to sell a lot of investments um, that, frankly, people just don't really understand how it works. And to be fair, most people selling the investments don't really understand the difference between all those interest rates that we talked about. Hmm. Well, t tell people, you know, how can they get your book? You've got a great book, Wealth Without Stocks or Mutual Funds. In fact, I was even happy to contribute a chapter because you talked, there was an entrepreneurial piece where we talked about million dollar publicity strategies, and I was happy yeah. to help you with that. Um, you've got a great book. How can people get it? Well, before I tell them how to get it, I just want to piggyback on what you said. You know, one of the ways to create wealth is with your own small business enterprise. So for all the business owners out there, we have a chapter that you contributed on, which is fantastic, Million Dollar Media Strategies. We also have a chapter on marketing. I've been very fortunate to be involved in several businesses, and we took them from nothing to um, going concerns in a big hurry. We've got a chapter called Million Dollar Internet Marketing Strategies. So for all you people that are starting out or business owners that want to increase your revenue, this book is for you as well. Uh, but where to pick it up? You can just go to our website, wealthwithoutstocks.com. Again, wealthwithoutstocks.com. Uh, you can order the book there. And uh, it'll actually, you're going to fill out a little registration form. It'll take you to the Amazon link. But go to our site first because once you buy the book at Amazon, it, it will give you directions on sending us over the receipt. And for any of your people that do that, Steve, I'd like to include a couple other things. If they'll just invest in the book, and this can be the, the paperback or they can buy the Kindle because we do have it on Kindle. I've got a home study course here that I have sold um, at Rich Dad, uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad events and some other seminar companies. I've sold it for $1,000. I would like to include the downloads of that for your people if they buy the paperback or even the Kindle. That's about 13 hours worth of training on being the bank, creating tax-free generational wealth, 
what vehicle to use in the bank. It's a great follow-up because it, it's discussed in the book, but now you've got even more training on it. And we also, uh, you've been such a huge help to me in promoting my first book and now my second book and getting media and having an online presence. I did all of that stuff after attending all of your events. So I can tell, I'm not sure who's going to receive this, but if you're watching this and you're thinking, man, I don't know, is this guy Steve Harrison for real? Should I really invest some money? Should I go to the publicity summit? Should I maybe do quantum leap? Do it all um, because it's been a huge help in my life. And to that end, I want to do the same for people's finances and for people's wealth creation. And it's neat for me to know that one day I'm going to leave this world and my mark is going to be people are going to start businesses. They're going to fund college educations. They're going to create more wealth to do all kinds of good things in this world. And I'm going to have a small part in that. So that's what gets me excited. So I want to thank you for what you've been able to do for me to help me get this message out to as many people as possible. So to that end, we also have uh, weekly webinars so people can tune in. Uh, when they go to the, the website, you look up at the top, it'll, it'll tell you about webinars. Click on it and register for an upcoming time and date that's going to be convenient for you. Um, and we look forward to having you on the webinars and reading the book. And we can't wait to get you the home study course as a bonus. Super. All right, John. Well, listen, thanks for joining me. Steve, it's been my pleasure. Anytime. Um, thank you so much. And we'll see you guys soon at another event. Okay, yeah, go right now to wealthwithoutstocks.com. You'll be able to get the book. You'll be able to access the trainings and all that, that John just talked about. It's amazing. Just one piece of information can make a huge difference in your finances. So go there right now. And, John, thanks for joining me. Steve, it's been my pleasure. Thanks for having me on the call. Glad I could help.